So if you are pretty good with numbers, well, then you should be able to estimate the answer to this math problem only using your brain, i.e. mental math, no calculators, no paper, no pencil. So the question is the following, a 15% tip for a $30.50 taxi fare is how much? Okay, so again, that is the problem and no materials other than your supercomputer. And if you don't know where your supercomputer is located, it's right up here, right between your ears. So you're gonna do this only using your brain. So uh, if you can figure this out, well, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. And of course, we'll walk through exactly how we can easily calculate this using mental mathematics. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so there's another rule here, and that is there is no time limit, okay? So you don't have to try to rush through this thing. So stop, focus, and uh, think about how can you estimate. Again, we're only looking for a pretty good estimation uh, for 15% uh, of $30.50. Of course, this would be the tip for a taxi fare. Okay, so here is the problem. We want to know what 15% of $30.50 uh, 50 is because this would be our tip, right? Our gratuity uh, for this taxi driver getting us to where we need to go. All right, now, how would we actually calculate this? Well, the way you would actually calculate the correct answer would be the following. So we would want to find 15% of $30.50, meaning we would need to uh, write this percent as a decimal and then multiply by $30.50. So how do we um, change this to a decimal? Well, we divide by 100 or move the decimal point over two places to the left. So we, we have 0.15. And then we have, we have to multiply 0.15 by 30.50. Uh, now, most of us are not going to do this math in our brain. Now, if you actually did the problem this way, well, that is super impressive. But most of us, again, are not going to do this problem this way because the problem has to deal with uh, estimation, right? So we're not looking for a perfect answer. We're looking for a reasonably close answer. So what can we do here to make our life easier? Well, if we want 15% of $30.50, well, if you're looking at this and say, you know, Mr. YouTube Math Man, how about we just round down and uh, make that $30.50, we'll just think of it, uh, you know, it's pretty close to $30, so we'll just think of this problem as 15% of 30, all right? So if this is what you're thinking, well, you are indeed thinking right. Now, uh, in terms of mental math, okay, of course, we want to make these um, calculations very easy to do in our brain. You always want to round, you know, you know, it could be the percent, it could be both numbers. But again, you're looking to make things, you know, uh, reasonably close to the values that you're working with. But you can't go too far, right? So in other words, if we were dealing with 37, uh, uh, 85, you wouldn't round that down to 30, right? That's too big of a gap. So you might want to consider rounding this up to maybe 38 or 40. All depends on your ability to do mental mathematics. Now, the strategy here involved or strategies involved to figure this out, these can vary from uh, person to person. So however you did this problem, as long as you understand your work and you got a reasonably good answer, then you know what, who am I to judge your mental math abilities? But let me go ahead and give you some uh, really good tools that you can always use, when, especially when you're talking about percent problems. So let's review some basic percent problems that all of you should know uh, right off the top of your head. And if you don't, no big deal, we will review this right now. Okay, so what is 1% of 100? Okay, now if you said uh, 1, you would be correct, right? So the definition of percent is comparing a number to a fraction where the denominator is 100. So 7 over 100, I'm comparing 7 to 100, is equal to 7%. Okay, so again, anytime you want to think of of a uh, percent as a fraction, you compare it to 100. So hopefully uh, this makes sense to you. You're like, okay, 1% of 100 is one. Now how about 10% of 100? 
of 200. What is 10% of 200? So if you said 20, that would be fantastic, okay? Now we can compare this right here, uh, 20 over 200, and let's reduce this fraction. So 20 over 200 is what? This is two over 20, and of course two goes into 20 10, so this is one over 10, and so the, uh, the fraction one over 10, if I multiply uh, both the numerator and denominator by 10, I'm going to have 10 over 100, okay? Again, I'm comparing a number to uh, a fraction, I'm comparing a number to a fraction where the denominator is 100, so this is 10%. So it's 10% of 200 is 20. Okay, so now that you understand that, so you know, you should be able to figure out this next problem. So what is 5% of 300? Well, you might be thinking, well, if I know how to figure out what 10% of a number is, right? So 10% of 200 is just these first two digits right here, it's 20, okay? So what do you think 10% of 300 is? Now, the, the question is 5%, but maybe we can get 10% first. So 10%, let me erase this right here, okay? So what is 10% of 300? Well, if 10% of 300 is equal to 30, I would say you're thinking, right? So if we take this percent right here and divide it by two, which of course would be 5%, and divide the answer of 10% um, of 10 of 300, uh, of course is 30, if we divide that by two, it would be 15. So 5% of 300 is 15. Okay, so if this all makes sense, well, they, uh, these are the little math tricks and math kind of hacks that you can use in order to do basic percent problems. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this all together, and our question now is the what? Well, it's figuring, figuring out what 15% of $30 is. This is our tip. Now, here, this 15%, uh, you know, we've been doing examples with 5 uh, or sorry, 5% uh, and 10%. So 5 plus 5, uh, 5, or sorry, 5 plus 10 is 15. So this is a little bit of a clue here on what to do. Okay, so if you kind of know where I'm going with this, well, let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. You see, I am not afraid to practice uh, this, which is, of course, practicing, asking you to subscribe. I do this every day because I post math videos every day, and uh, I need your help, all right? So I'm definitely not shy to ask for your help. Now, if you need help in math, uh, you know, mathematics or anything else, don't be shy. There's someone out there that can help you out. Uh, so find yourself a good teacher that can teach this material, you know, in a clear and understandable way. Now, maybe you have access to a great math teacher, maybe a math tutor, or someone that you like to learn from. That is fantastic because if you can work with someone one-on-one, -on -one, guess what? You can ask questions. So anytime you have the ability to ask questions like a teacher, you should be asking questions. Hey, I don't understand this. I don't understand that. You know, so don't feel shy about asking a question. There's that old adage, uh, there is no such thing as a dumb question, right? You, you, if you don't understand something, you know, um, get help, right? So for me, though, I need your help because I'm trying to help as many of you out there learn mathematics, get better at this stuff. And, uh, you know, the best way you can support my work is to hit that subscribe button and then hit that notification button as well. So you get my latest videos. Thank you so much. Now let's get back to this problem. Okay, so 15% of 30. This is what we've kind of distilled this problem down to, but we've already kind of reviewed that we can easily uh, find the 10% of a number and 5% of a number using met mental mathematics. So let's think of this 15% as 10% uh, plus 5%, which of course would be 15%. So we can just break this down into its kind of component parts. So 10% of 30 would be what? Well, hopefully you said that is three, right? Of course, we can always check that. Three out of 30 is what? It's the fraction one over 10, because three goes into 30 10 times, and then I have one tenth, which of course, if I multiply that uh, denominator by 10, I'm gonna end up with 100, with 100, and then I'll end up with a 10 in the numerator. So anytime we're comparing a number to 100, uh, that is percent, so this is 10%, all right? So just a quick review on percent. Okay, so 10% of 30 is three, and so what is 5% of 30? Well, if you know what 10% of 30 is, it's three. 
5% of 30 is going to be half of this. So we just take that three or $3 and divide it by two, and that's going to be $1.50. Okay, so 10% of uh, 30 is $3. 5% of 30 is $1.50. Of course, uh, 10 plus 5 is 15%. That's what I want. So it's going to be three plus $1.50, which of course is $4.50. Okay, so I think most of you actually did this problem in this manner. If you took a different uh, approach, that's perfectly fine as long as you got a good reasonable estimate and you understood the math and it is correct. Well, that is fantastic. But let's take a look at actually how to do this using a calculator, for example. So again, what we uh, want to do is take this percent, turn it into a decimal and then multiply by the actual value. In this case, it was $30.50. So, uh, 15% as a decimal, again, remember what we need to do is divide by 100, which is the same thing as moving the decimal point over uh, two places to the left, so that's 0.15, so it's gonna be 0.15 times this 3050. So in our calculator, 0.15 times 3050 is approximately $4.58. So this would be the actual 15% tip. So that, uh, you know, even if you just gave this uh, taxi driver $4.50, you know, it's not quite 15% uh, percent, uh, tip, but I'm pretty sure they would be uh, very happy. They'd be like, uh, thank you so much uh, for the tip, you know. But uh, anyways, so that is that. Again, what's the whole purpose of doing this? Well, you know, I think practicing math, you know, using your brain, is something that's healthy for you, okay? Now, it's healthy on a lot of levels. One, the more math you know, the better off you can be just handling different, you know, uh, situations in your life, you know, in terms of practical math, consumer math, business math, whatever the case is, but also just practicing using your brain. Using your, your brain is an actual muscle, and the more you kind of challenge it to figure out different type of problems, that's why doing like puzzles and riddles and things are very, very good for you. Matter of fact, there's been a lot of studies out there that, you know, this is one of the ways that you kind, to, you kind of keep your, your mental abilities as you age. So doing math is a good thing for a lot of reasons, and if you want to learn mathematics, if you're not a math student, you're like, hey, you know what, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you inspire me to learn some math. And if you're not a math student, let me recommend two courses to you. You'll find both of these courses in the description below. So the first is my Math Foundations course. So this is a quick uh, review course on basic math, you know, to include decimal, percent, fractions, all that kind of good stuff. But if you really want to take it a step further, and learn basic math, but continue on, check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course because there I'll teach you basic math, but I'm also teach you, uh, teach you a ton of algebra, geometry, even some basic trigonometry and some probability and statistics, and all my courses are self-paced as well. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math and adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.